Hello and welcome back to another episode of The Legal Geeks. Thanks so much for joining us today. Today we are here to discuss the movie that just came out called Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Now I have to make a little disclaimer first. I have not seen this movie. I had no interest in seeing this movie. However, my friend Joshua did see this movie and he's going to tell me and all of us now why we should all see this movie. Josh? Thank you. You know, it started out, you know, normally, I'm, I'm a historian at heart, and this isn't the sort of thing I would normally enjoy. But there's a bigger issue. A few years ago, when I was at a conference in Los Angeles, it happened to coincide with the opening of one of the Twilight movies. And seeing those girls <laughs> and their mothers camped out overnight on the street, the giggling, the squealing, all for sparkly teenage vampires. <laughs> this is wrong. Vampires are undead creatures that feed on the living to stay alive. The idea of them brooding, being cute, living for 300 years and not doing anything useful like like finding a cure for cancer, and <laughs> sucking the blood out of the living is completely unacceptable for people to think, hey, I'll sparkle and be okay. Oh, look, we're day walkers now. No one questioned that. So when Abraham Lincoln Vampire, you know, came out, you know, for the, I was given the book as a gift, and I, and I didn't want to read it until the horror of Twilight became more pervasive in society. And I thought, you know what? I'm okay with President Lincoln hunting down vampires with an axe. I'm fine with that. It made me happy to go, you know what, we're going to turn the tide against Twilight and vampires who sparkle and put a stop to this madness once and for all. Because there's been enough squealing, there's been enough giggling, and it must end. Because vampires are inherently evil creatures that feed on the living. Let's not forget what they are. So that's why, Jessica. All right. I think this is a point well taken. I have to say, personally, I had read that Angel from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, greatest TV show of all time, that Angel maybe even started this trend of vampires also going from always horrible, always awful, sucking blood to actually a pretty cool boyfriend kind of idea. Um, and that breaks my heart because I agree with you, it's gone too far. Vampires, you know, they're no longer what they were supposed to be. But um, I still do love Angel, and so we'll defend Angel, even if it did start us down this slippery slope. It did, and, and as much as I respect Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you know, which again has in the name Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you, uh, I remember that when it, when that came out. I worked at Century 10 in Mountain View. We had to sell tickets for it and watch men, grown men, with a straight face say, two for Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And they looked a little pained while sailing, saying it, but you know what? It was a good flick. I mean, it was hard not to like that. And the TV show that followed was enjoyable. But then again, look at where we are now. They sparkle. <laughs> I would say that the TV show was amazing, of course, and we can discuss that in future episodes. But um, and the the movie, of course, Joss Whedon lost control of, which is why he wanted to do the TV show. But uh, it is a great concept, and of course, the name is what causes so much mocking. But the name is part of the brilliance. That being said, we'll get back to Empire, or Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. So, from a historical perspective, since you are a history buff. Besides the fact that he slayed vampires, were there any other gross historical inaccuracies? Uh, a, a couple things that, that, that I noticed that bothered me. You know, we had uh, Stephen Douglas, you know, appears a couple times in the film. And I really do feel they missed the mark with Stephen Douglas. Because if you read some of the, the brilliant historical uh, books by uh, Stephen Oates, uh, who, fantastic, you know, Lincoln uh, scholar, great, great history books. You know, Stephen Douglas' nickname was The Little Giant. He drank, you know, probably was an alcoholic. He swore, he, he was very foul, and he was also a very confident man. And so he wasn't portrayed like that in the movie. And so he was portrayed more as like the politician. Mm. And while, while I, I get that, because not everyone, you know, studies, you know, Stephen Douglas, but when, when you look at, you know, how he was, and after he lost the election of 1860, you know, he, he showed up fairly early to, you know, the White House, 
you know, to pledge his support to Lincoln because, you no, know, he wanted to go get the traitors. He was not very forgiving about secession. Uh, now, unfortunately, you know, Douglas died fairly early in the war from, from uh, you know, medical problems that he had. Um, but, you know, he was, he was underrated uh, in the film because he was a very confident, fiery debater, and, and they, they, they could have had a lot of fun with that. Uh, oh, that's too bad. Another thing I noticed was uh, Joshua Speed. Now, without giving too much away, Joshua Speed lived until 1882. Um, not much more needs to be said about that without, without <laughs> giving away major spoilers in the film. Uh, yes. Uh, there, there's, a, there's a little cameo with Jefferson Davis. And now, while this wasn't a big film about Jefferson Davis, he has one little, you know, you know cameo in it, if you can call it that. But Davis had an eye disease. And so his, you know, there, there are some nice little articles that talk about what exactly it was. But from, I remember one history book that I read in college that described it, you know, his left eye looking a little fogged over and a little dead. Um, you know, the, some people debate, you know, whether or not he was blind or not in, in his left eye. But, you know, it, it was probably not comfortable to look him in the eye be, because of that. Now, what I liked, uh, you know, was the depiction of Mary Todd Lincoln. Cause, cause, was she your favorite character in the movie? or I, You know, I, I put her up there because, you know, part of it is she, she was adorable. You know, you know the actress who, who played her did, did a really nice job, and, and she was played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead. And, you know, it's easy. Mary, the real Mary Todd was a little heavy set, high maintenance, and, and probably a little, you know, mentally unbalanced. And, she had a hard life. She had a, this is pre, you know, all, all the horrific things happening to her. But when you look at later in life, <clears throat> three of her four sons died, you know, before reaching adulthood. So that's highly traumatic. Her husband shot through the back of the head next to her. That is profoundly nightmarish. That, that's oh. difficult. The number of death threats that she she received, because again, we had a civil war. If you think politics are nasty now, <laughs> yeah, you know you you don't have you know battles with you know thirty seven thousand people dying over three days. So you know it was it was a very very trying, stressful, nightmarish period in American history. Her oldest son Robert tried committing her to an insane asylum in in Batavia, Illinois. Drove by it once, visiting a friend in Batavia, and and she thought she would impress me with like, hey, look, that's where you know Mary Todd was, you know, you know, supposed to go, and I I rattled off a lot of historical knowledge, which kind of surprised her because I knew that off the top of my head, but I'm funny that way, uh, but you know, so that that effectively ended Robert Todd Lincoln's political aspirations to become president. Now there are some quotes out there where he said like he didn't want to be president or vice president but you know I, I disagree with that there were others who yeah. think he, he really didn't want it <clears throat> he was secretary of war under uh, President Garfield who was assassinated um, second to be assassinated uh, and and then Chester Arthur so <clears throat> and it was apparently like near um, uh, he was in Buffalo New York when when McKinley got shot too so you know he kind of had a little black cloud around him and so there he was a little nervous about going to the opening of the Lincoln Memorial in 1922 which had Presidents Harding and former President Taft who was then Chief Justice there and he went and without incident so that was a good thing oh. um, you know but going back to the film uh, we only see one of the sons uh, in in the movie so but again you can only pack so much in but the way they depict Mary Todd she, she's competent She's cute. Um, she's together, and you know, and, and she's not afraid to play hero at a, at a pivotal scene as well. And so, you know, th those were those were all nice things because it's like, wow, she actually had a nice depiction in the movie, as opposed to showing her it in you know an unflattering light. So it was very nice to to see her, you know, depicted in a very nice way in a strong way. Uh, showing that she was both a good wife, but you know had a backbone and, and personality of her own, and you know did the right thing. So you know there there is there is a little of that 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 I enjoyed. Uh, oh, good. And, but as I, I look at this, you know, again, you know, did the 16th president of the United States really hunt vampires with an axe? No. 
But did I enjoy that? Yes, I did. Because he's a bow tie wearing lawyer who got to kill vampires with an axe. What's not to like about that? I found that entertaining. I found it endearing. I look forward to, you know, finding out the, you know, say the, the you know, James Madison hunted werewolves. You know, we, we could look at the, <laughs> that the War of 1812 was more than the impressment of sailors. That there was a darker, deeper issue with the werewolf threat in the United States that dated back to the founding. So we, we could have a lot of fun with these things. So it's... Uh, look at that. We know uh, who we will be watching in a year or two. Yeah, it's like, you know, he was the shortest president, and yet, you know, uh, you know... And he was uh, one of the only presidents to win re-election after, you know, a down economy because, you know, we were in a war. And so, again, uh, you know, you know, father of the Constitution, you know, we, we could have a little fun with him there, too. So, again, did I enjoy Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter? You bet I did. Uh, is it good to watch on, say, iTunes when it comes out on, you know, or, or Blu-ray or anything like that? Of course. But on a fundamental level, the sparkling vampires must come to an end. And Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> Vampire Hunter, is the beginning of that end, where we could stop this sparkling, glittering menace once and for all. Wow. All right. Well said. Yes, when it comes to Netflix Instant Queue, I'm totally going to watch it now. All right. Well, thank you so much, Josh. I think you have made a convincing case for why everybody needs to go out and see Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln Vampire Hunter. My pleasure.